day in which we celebrate Peace and Justice Sunday. I'm here to get you caught up in the life of our church and some of the things that are happening while we're absent one from another. And I want to report to you that we still have outreach going on. Uh, there is a dedicated few who have been coming up on Saturday mornings, and we had, until recently, just only been giving out food. But this past Saturday, we tried a little something different, and we took about eight racks and lined them up on the sidewalk where clothing could be gone through by those who had come for not only foods and clothes, and we deemed it a success in the fact that those that needed food, as always, was able to get it, but there were some who took advantage as well of getting some of the clothing that we have. Our clothes pantry, our clothes closet, excuse me, is just overstocked to the gills because we have not been making that available due to the fact of having people in the building and what we're, this pandemic time that we're in right now. So we are tried a little something different and we're gonna see how that goes on the first Saturday of each month and see how we can do until we can get a battle handled on how we should approach this. I want you to know in reference to the outreach that we did, there were 15 families that received food. Of those 15 families, 13 of them also looked at clothing. 44 adults were served and 30 children. Needless to say, with us not meeting each week and been uh, serving from the food pantry over the last is severely depleted. So if you have the time and you're willing to get out more nowadays since the restrictions have been uh, loosened some, uh, there, there is a need. And there's just no one particular need. We need everything. So fruits, vegetables, um, canned meats, beans, and rice. And we're talking about the beans that you cook, not the canned, bags of beans and bags of rice. Um, and just the normal things that we normally serve at the food pantry. So we are in need. And uh, hopefully there are going to be those that will be able to do some shopping this week as well. I want to remind you that, that uh, Charlie Walden has started an online Bible study. This is a laity-led Bible study, book of Genesis. Uh, we had our first week of this this past week. Uh, the, the lesson and information comes up on Mondays. Monday afternoon, I think, is the very latest that it's up, but I believe they try to have it up on Monday morning. But uh, you're able to review about a probably 15 to 20 minute session uh, on the standpoint of the, the chapters that are going to be covered. And then on Wednesday evening, there is a Zoom time that is together to discuss what not only you heard and what you read. You need to register ahead of time for the Zoom. So as you review the lesson on Mondays or Tuesdays, there is a sign up in which you sign and then you will be given the information as to how to sign up, how to engage the Zoom meeting that takes place on Wednesday. That, uh, that should take care of our announcements for the week. As we prepare to worship this morning, you received information that once again we would be doing the love feast instead of uh, Holy Communion. So I hope you have gotten, gotten your sweets or your bread and your water and your apple juice to be able to partake in this as we come to that time during our worship service together. So with all that being said, I'm going to invite Valerie to come forth as we do our call to worship.
Good morning, and please join me in this morning's call to worship. God the Creator is present in our space. The, the love, love of God, God is, is with us. us. Jesus, our Redeemer, is present in our space. The grace the of, of our, our Lord, Lord is, is with us. us. The Holy Spirit is present in our space. The, the communion, communion of the, the Spirit, Spirit is, is with us. us. We welcome the fullness of God's presence. God, God the, the Creator, Redeemer, Redeemer and Sustainer, sustainer be, be with us now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. If you'll bow with me as we have our opening prayer this morning. Holy, holy, holy God, in calling forth creation from the void, revealing yourself in human flesh, and pouring forth your wisdom to guide us, you manifest your concern for your whole universe. You invite us as your people to gather the world's needs into our hearts and bring them before you. Amen. David will now come forth and lead us in our opening hymn. We come to a time in our worship experience that we continue to lift up each other in prayer and those that we know are on our prayer list. And you should have that with you. And those of you who are just joining in that are new family members, we sent out a a list each week of those who remain sick and shut in lists. But this is a time in which we lift that prayer up, not only for each other, but those that we know and love. And I just have a few that some of you have, have brought to my attention this week as we've had our calls and time together. Uh, Gail is asking that we remember Melvin Searles. He is a neighbor, and Eileen, his wife, and Gail have a close relationship, and this is Gail Blight, uh, have a close relationship, and just this past week, she informed Gail that her husband had a severe blood disease and that it had caused problems with his kidneys and a few other organs, and he had to be rushed to the hospital and Gail sent me an email just um, last night that her neighbor had passed. So for the family of Melvin Sears, Searle, excuse me, and Eileen, his wife, and also for Gail for this loss that they have dealt or are having to deal with. I also want to bring to your attention, I talked with uh, Max Ann uh, on Saturday at the clothes closet and food pantry, and she also made note to me that a friend of hers and Cecil's for many years had a severe accident on his farm, and he 
has gone on to his reward as well. I'm sorry, I don't remember if uh, Max Ann gave me the name, but for Max Ann and Cecil and their special friend whose life was tragically lost this past weekend while working at his farm. I want to remind you that Manuel and, Gale and Caleb are still working with the challenges that, that face Caleb. Uh, but Manuel has some great news in the fact, I think I've already told you, he does now have gainful employment and it's in the field that he had been working in for some time and that of, of taking care of phone in calls through a, a uh, what center? Call center. So he is doing that, but he has a second challenge in the standpoint of some legal maneuvers that must take place in reference to Caleb. So we ask that you keep, keep him in prayer as they go through that time together as well. Jan Lovell, in speaking with him this week, also spoke of a lost friend from, from school and many years ago that he attended the going home service of this past week. So we want to be sure and keep Jan and the family of his friend in prayer as well. A number of you know that my birth mom uh, is in the hospital. She had had to have an emergency gallbladder removal. Uh, it was quite uh, toxic at the time. And there's some underlying issues that still are present. She's having quite a bit of problem with her kidneys and uh, the numbers are not coming back in line as they would hope. And because of other issues that she has, such as heart, heart problems and whatnot, um, there's gonna be some challenges ahead of her and some decisions for all of us to make. And I will be leaving to head to East Texas, uh, East Texas Tyler area, just as soon as we finish this morning. So your continued prayers are definitely appreciated for the Sanders family. Uh, we want to also bring up Valerie's sister, Lisa Anani, Anani, excuse me, and she is dealing with leukemia, leukemia. And what has happened at this point is that the doctor has given her a three month leave of medical absence from work and in hopes that um, the treatments that they are fixing, they are about to do will, will help. Uh, Lisa was hoping for a longer time than that, but at the present time, it's only three months. And so, you know, the stress of not only what's taking place at work and in the workplace right now, she is in the hotel industry and with what they have to do to get rooms ready and, and the vacancy and spacing and all the challenges is going to that, uh, plus the standpoint of what she's dealing with health-wise, the stress level is always quite high. So prayers are needed for the Anani family. That's Lisa, Anani, and family. Those are the, the uh, ones that I have for you. And uh, like I say, please either call into the church office and leave the information with us. Uh, if um, D doesn't get it on Tuesdays or Fridays, then it would be on the recorder, and we will try to have those to be able to lift up on Sunday. So, as we come in your mercy, hear our prayer. Would you go with me in the spirit of prayer? Gracious and glorious God, in these trying times that we now face, both with the standpoint of the pandemic and that of this Sunday as we are reminded this is a time for peace with justice. Good Lord, in this time, this world is struggling with a number of things whether it be economy, how we treat each other, 
the absence of being able to attend worship in a building as which we are accustomed. But we know, we know that you are a ever fulfilling God and your spirit resonates no matter where we are and that if we would only truly and completely trust in you, we will be able to make it through the various challenges that face us at the time. Sometimes it is health, sometimes it is the thought and the loss of loved ones, the mind that has drifted off into another area that we do not understand, but we know you are there. The broken bodies, the understanding when we yet not understand, but we trust. And we praise your holy name because you are with us and you are the Father and we can lean on and be supplied for what we need by you. It is in Jesus' holy name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Valerie is going to come forth and lead us in our affirmation today which coincides with the standpoint of Peace, Peace and Justice Sunday with the United Methodist liturgy of our social creed. This is from the Book of Discipline on page 142. God in the Spirit revealed in Jesus Christ calls us by grace to be renewed in the image of our creator that we may be one in divine love for the world today is the day god cares for the integrity of creation wills the healing and wholeness of all life weeps at the plunder of earth's goodness and so shall we today is the day god embraces all hues of humanity delights in diversity and difference, favors solidarity, transforming strangers into friends. And, and so, so shall we. we. Today is the day God cries with the masses of starving people between rich and poor, demands justice for workers in the marketplace. And, and so, so shall we. we. Today is the day God deplores violence in our homes and streets rebukes the world's warring madness, humbles the powerful, and lifts, lifts up the lowly. And so shall we. Today is the day God calls for nations and peoples to live in peace, and celebrates where justice and mercy embrace, exults when the wolf grazes with the lamb. And so shall we. Today is the day God brings good news to the poor, proclaims release to the captives, gives sight to the blind, and sets the oppressed free. And so shall we.
Thank you, David. And once again, I want to remind you as we move into the second half of our time together that we are doing the love feast. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we have come to this place frail and broken in a world of violence, hate, and greed and isolation in a church searching to find the way forward. We will look for a healing through this restorative service of old. It is in this agape feast where adversaries become friends, friends become neighbors, and Christian families embrace all. Let us come to a time of centering before we share a blessing of sweets and water or juice, just as the first Christians did in ancient times. The history of the feast is a celebration born simply out of love and fellowship is beautiful. Christians today must be grateful for the restored resurrection of the celebration to us by the Moravians and also for the validity given to it by Charles Wesley. The feast is appropriate in any Christian setting and can nourish the heart and souls of Christians in so many ways. It is at time, it is the most basic, the love, at its most basic, the love feast is an experience of warmth and sharing, a commemoration of the early church. It is the most symbolic, a means of God's grace that is experienced in fellowship with each other and with God. But the simplest explanation of the love feast to which one can respond when asked is that it is a way to remember Christ's presence on earth and the celebration with gratitude, the spirit of God's love. We will now have our anthem by J. Marsh. The scripture today comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, 
and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Valerie. I want to first apologize for not having my jacket on. It is laying on the edge of the couch where I left it as I walked. So uh, please forgive me. The reading this morning that we have that comes from Matthew, all of us are very familiar with. And I'd like to say ties in quite well with the standpoint of our mission statement that we are moving forward with. Love God, love others, make disciples. Add along with that the vision for this church being as the hands and feet of Christ. We gather, we grow, and we go. That is so basic. It's easy to hold on to, easy to remember, easy to, to find a way of living into that. Because sometimes scripture can be a little daunting for some. And sometimes we just need to go back to some basics. Go all the way back to those things that was trying to be used in the beginning to lay our foundation. And that basically is my subject today in my sermon, in that you, we, can make a difference. And what I'm going to use today, some of you have read or maybe have heard excerpts from, because I'm going to be using some er excerpts from it today, is all I really need to know I learned in kindergarten. So we're going to go all the way back to those basics that, that not only some of us learned in school and our children were taught, the basics about how to treat each other, right, establishing right and wrong. And Robert Filgum, who wrote the book, did it so wonderful with the simplicity of those things that were established for us when we were kindergartners, maybe preschool and first graders, as a base and foundation that was set for us. So here are some of the excerpts from that book. All I really need to know about how to live and what to do and how to be, I learned in kindergarten. Wisdom was not graduate school mountain, but it was there in the sign pile at Sunday school. These are the things that I learned. Share everything. Lord knows we could learn to share more. Play fair. As children, once that, that rule is established in their life, they, they want things to be fair for everyone. How many times has your child, your grandchild, other children you've heard that are small that would say out loud and with such a voice that that ain't fair, that to play fair. Don't hit people. Put things back where you found them. Clean up your messes. Don't take things that aren't yours. Say you're sorry 
when you hurt someone. Again, Lord knows we could use more of that. Wash your hands before you eat. Uh, flush. And I'd really love this one. Warm cookies and cold milk are good for you. Live a balanced life. Learn something and think something and draw and paint and sing and dance and play and oh yeah, work some. Take a nap every day. Oh, don't we wish? And when you go into the world, watch for traffic, hold hands, and stick together. And there's this section that talked about wonder. We wonder a lot as kids. And maybe sometimes we fail to remember as adults. But Remember the little seeds in the styrofoam cup? The roots go down and the plant goes up and nobody really knows how or why. But we are all like that. Goldfish and hamsters and white mice and even those little seeds in the styrofoam cup they all die. And sadly, so do we. Everything you need to know is there somewhere. The golden rule and love and basic sanitation, ecology and po uh, politics and equality and sane living. Take any of those items and extrapolate into this sophisticated adult world that we live in and apply it to your family life, your work, your government, your world, and it holds true and clear and firm. Just think for a moment. Think if the whole world, all of us, would have cookies and milk at 3 o'clock every afternoon and then lay down with our blankie and take a nap. Or if all governments had a basic policy to always make things better than what they were when they found it and definitely clean up their own mess. It is still as true today, no matter how old you are, it's best to hold hands and stick together. One of the other things that children learn in that early age and how it starts to affect them again referring back to that it ain't fair it was my turn however that has happened they learned right and wrong a kid has a true sense of what is fair or unjust And right now, we have a problem with what's right and wrong for all individuals in our nation. We know what is right and what is wrong, and all of us have seen it. And yet, we have failed to point it out or say anything about it. But society is telling us 
that is the collective body of society is that these past few weeks, we are no longer going to have a blind eye or a deaf ear to injustice that we know are present. That all of us can see right and wrong and we can do better and be better than we have in the past. Again, we've all seen it, whether it was in the store, in school, in our government, and just recently in the death of Mr. George Floyd. And the great majority of humanity is saying it was wrong. This time, humanity is saying that we are not using a blind eye or turning a deaf ear. It was wrong. And we know the difference between right and wrong and injustice. So no longer will we stand idly by. That all should speak up and speak out for what is right for all. Whether they are red, black, yellow, or white, right knows no color. And just like we learned in kindergarten, maybe we all need a time out. And we need to, you know, you, what you were supposed to do when you were in your time out, you were supposed to think about things. And maybe, just maybe this part of the excerpt in the book is what we all need to think about. That the world, the whole world, if we all just had milk and cookies at three o'clock every afternoon and then we laid down with our blankie and took a nap. Or that all governments had a basic policy to always make things better than they were when we found them and to clean up our own messes. And it's still true. No matter how old you are, when you go out into the world, it is best to hold hands and stick together. For what we're seeing now, for what we are realizing, let us stand by some of these basic principles that we learn and somehow, some way, we may have either forgotten, put to the side, or maybe we just didn't get it the first time. But because of who we are, because of the reading that we have from Christ, because we charge that we have from Christ in today's reading, and he tells us to go into all the world. He didn't say that part of the world that looks like you, feels like you, thinks like you, he said, all the world. And he says, remember the things that I have taught you. And that was to love and care for one another. And as we hold on to those truths, 
and remember our mission, loving God, loving others, and making disciples, that maybe we won't have to go to time out. But I still want the milk and cookies in my blankie. And not only you, but all of us can make a difference. And the people of God said, amen. <laughs> Hear this prayer. We thank you, O oh God, for the life and knowledge which you have revealed through Christ, your child, our brother. To your be the glory forever. As the piece of bread is scattered over the hills and then brought together to be made one, so let your church be brought together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory and the power through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. I would ask now that you would gather your items for the love and that you would hear this as part of that moment and this time that we have together. Before you, you will find some water or juice and some sweet. It is important to remember that this feast is not a Eucharist feast, but one of love and fellowship. Let us commemorate our unity through Christ and the feast and feast on the spirit of love who is Christ. You may eat and drink. Hear this as a blessing for you. As we prepare to go away from our time together, I'm going to read to you the words from I Need You to Survive. This comes out of the Zion hymnal and is found on page 219. I need you, you need me. We are all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is God's will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. It's God's will that every need be sublime. You are important to me, and I need you to survive. You are important to me, and I need you to survive. May you be blessed. May this week be one that is filled with joy. May you find that the stranger is now a friend and that the friend is now a neighbor. 
and that because we are all children of God, we will see that right prevails and that we will speak when wrong shows its ugly head. Until we have our time together next week, may you be blessed. May you know that you're children of God and as followers of Christ, we will do